Okay, so this is what I did to make that screw. In fact, this is me making that screw. The magic of television. First of all, get yourself a bolt. Now, because that tap and die set, this tap and die set is metric. I'm doing metric. This is a 10 mil metric bolt. The pitch is 1.5. So if you don't have a pitch gauge, which I doubt if you do, it's one of these things, and it has all the different size pitches that you could want. But all you've got to do to check it is this is a 10 mil, 1.5 mil pitch, and if I hold that onto there, those threads will match perfectly. What I've discovered is if you're cutting threads in timber using a tap, you generally want the coarsest thread possible. So that's why I'm going 1.5 mil. That's the coarsest thread in that box. I think it goes, it's, uh, might be 0 0.75, 1, 1.25, 1, 1, 1 1.5, whatever. But the coarsest one will give you the best results in timber. So. I've got a bolt that's longer than I wanted and I think it cost me a whole 98 cents and they threw in a nut as well, which we'll use later on. Now, I've got a little bit of timber here, just a scrap bit. Um, this is Brigolo, but it can be anything you like. And it's got to be thicker than the head. So if I hold the head up to that, you can tell it's thicker than the head. Now, the head, I'll take this off now. I don't need it. You can, if you've got a grinder and you want to, you can grind a bit of meat off the head or you can grind the hexes off. I'm going to leave it exactly the way it is just in case you haven't got any of those things. This has got a maker's mark or cast on the top. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm just going to file that flat. It really doesn't make that much difference, but if you can get it flat, when we come to glue it in, you'll find you get a much better glue. Standard file here, nothing flash. And I'm just leveling it off. If I had a, this is a finished file, if I had a um, milling file, it'd be quicker, but this is okay. And that'll do. So that, that's just flat. So the mark that was actually cast on there isn't there. It's nice and flat. And to hold it in the vise, all I've got is two little Vs cut into a piece of timber. Put the bolt in there, there. And when you put it into the vise and tighten it up, it's not going to twist. And more importantly, it doesn't wreck your vise. And when we come to cutting it to length, it's also a great little trick because you can put it in there, hold it in the vise and cut it without it twisting. But we'll do that later on. So, at the moment I've got a bit of timber, I've got a bolt, I'll measure the bolt, the head of it, and I'm going to measure across the flats. Okay, that's 18 mil. Oh, sorry, across the points. If you go across the flats, you'll find that's a 16 mil nut. But across the peaks is 18 mil, and I'm going to cut a round hole, so you need to know what that size is. I don't have an 18 mil force in a bit, and I don't want to use a spade bit, but what I'll do is I'll cut this at 19 mil. It's only going to be half a mil bigger, so that doesn't really matter. And the other thing you've got to take note of is the diameter of the bolt. This being a 10 mil bolt, it's a 10 mil diameter. So what I'm gonna do, we'll go over to the drill press. I'm gonna drill down 19 mil or three quarters of an inch to the depth of that head. And then on another piece of timber, or another piece here, I'm gonna drill a hole 10 mil. So the stock can fit that through that hole. And what I thought I'd do, I've got a bit of shim brass here. 
I'm actually going to have some brass in between it as well, just to give it a feature. Don't have to do it, purely aesthetic. And I'll drill a 10 mil hole in this as well. I think that's it. What you can do, if you want a slimmer bolt, as I said, you can either file down the head of the bolt a bit more or go half the depth of the bolt head into this, then half the depth of the bolt head into the other bit that we're going to slide up to it. But to make this simple, I'm just going in the depth of the bolt head into this timber. So let's go over to the drill and we'll drill all that up. Okay, so first of all, I'll get three quarter inch force nut. Oh, push up. Okay, that's three quarter inch, 19 mil. If you got an 18 mil, all the better. But I know I don't have one, so I'm not worried about it. Let's pop that in the chuck. Now what I'm going to do, because this is going to be a knob and it's going to have something solid in it, I'm going to take the quarter sawn part of this plank and if you look down this end you can see the grain is almost perpendicular, that's quarter sawn. If you look over here, it's got some roundness in it, that's crown cut, and the quarter sawn is far more stable than the crown cut. Now, that will be the centre of the tree. This is the outside of the tree. And I want to go down the thickness of this bolt. Here we go. So now I'm going to switch this over. Get a 10 mil bit, this is metric. That's 10 mil. And drill another hole. I quite like that, so I'm going to go. have a good hold of that, did I? Jumped a bit. Doesn't matter, it'll all be good. So that's what we've got. Oh, hang on. Got to do this bit of brass too. So I'm going to do that in the centre. And this I'm going to hang on very, very tight. mil hole in a piece of brass. Okay, back into the workshop. I'm just going to go over to the bandsaw, make sure that fits through there, which it does, and this is below the surface of that, which it is. So I'll go over to the bandsaw and I'm just going to cut these up. Nothing special, doesn't matter. The only thing you've got to remember is that you are bigger than the knob that you want to make. So there we do. There we go. Two bits of timber. So the bolt will sit in there. That will go over the top, get glued. But I'm also going to put a bit of brass in there. So I will cut this. To a reasonable size. All right. Now the other thing you can do, which I'm going to do, is cut a block of timber 
I'm just going to drill a 10 mil hole down there and you'll see why in a tick. Clamp that up. Turn that on, hang on to that. Okay, so I've got a hole through there. Now I'm going to get some two-part epoxy. I think you're always better to mix up too much than not enough. And those of you that have been following my channel know I don't believe you can ever have too much glue because you can always wipe excess off. Very hard to put stuff in. Okay, so it's pretty well mixed. So first what we do is fill that hole up as best you can. Oh, this stuff stinks. And give it a liberal coating all over. Put that in. Spread that glue around that's coming out. Now I'm going to put the brass on. It should slide on there nicely. Now I'm going to put the rest of it on the end piece. Like that. Put that onto there. And I don't know if we'll have it, but we'll see. I've um, got the sapwood opposite each other. So we'll see how that goes. Now let's get a little bit of paper here. This is just a precautionary measure more than anything else. Put that over there. Then this that I drilled the hole through, just slide that over the top of the bolt. Now we can put all that in the vise at what, as one unit. And it'll squash up quite nicely. And I've got good squeeze out. I'll show you. I've got good squeeze out all the way around that between the brass and the timber. So that's what we want. All right. We'll leave that. And with the magic of television once more, I'll be back instantly and that will be set. Okay, there it is, dried. Now, if you've got a lathe, this is a lot easier. If you haven't got a lathe, it doesn't matter. I'll show you another way you can do it. And you'll notice I've got a nut there. The reason for that is when I put this in the chuck and tighten it up, if I damage the thread at all, I can rewind that nut, which will straighten the thread out. Now, I'm not going to turn all of this on the lathe. You could. But the reason I'm not is because I've got this brass in here. And I will do a little bit of wood turning on it, but at the moment I just want to define where the centre is going to be or what size knob that I want. Um, with this you could, you know, use a, a skew or, or anything really. I'm just using a three-point scribe and I'm just going to work out at how big I want that knob to be. So 
I've just marked that circle. Now I'm going to go down to the sander and I'm going to take all that excess off. So we'll go down the other shed and we'll go to the disc sander. enough for my purpose what I'll do now we'll go back up to the lathe and I'll just take that excess off now just a word of warning that little brass strip while I was sanding got very very hot so just be mindful of that okay back up to the lathe now I think I'll use a bowl gouge I could use a scraper I guess but that uh, brass is not an issue really because it's a lot softer than the high speed steel metal that I've got in my uh, lathe tools and I'll just get a bowl gouge and for those that are interested I'm using the Glenn Lucas number no. 4 bowl gouge which I absolutely love okay so here we go I'm just going to use a peeling cut or scraping cut to get that round. Now I'm just going to um, I'll shape this a little bit and then that will do us. Bear in mind you haven't got too far you can go down here because you've got the thickness of the bolt head there so I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. Get a bit of a bit of a wax polish. And there we have it. beautiful handmade knob with brass inlay and you can see what I've done with the sap wood I've orientated 180 degrees apart now what that does it means you're not trying to be clever and say it's one piece of wood you're actually accentuating the uh, the positive in it so back down the other workshop and uh, we'll go from there so now I've got to work out how much I want spare thread here and I really don't want much this has got to go to there I'll just mark this with a pencil if I can find one put them either side put it in the vice turn it around so I can see what I'm doing what you can do is put a nut on there but I haven't got enough room for that so we'll just hope I don't mess the thread up too much. And 
And then with a file, I'll just clean that up. And if there is any burring, just get the nut and put it on there. And what I'm actually going to do is go to the grinder and I'm just going to round this off. And there we have it. I just rounded that off to make it a little bit smoother so it doesn't mark the timber as much. Cap the nut on there just in case I bent the thread over. And then you can just spin the nut off and it'll bring the thread into line. So let's see how we went at the end of all that. The bit we just tapped fits over there. Now this screws in there. And there you go, nice and tight. Loosen it, you can move it, you can increase the height if you want, you can lower it, you can turn it around. All done with a bit of ingenuity. And if you'd like to see how I cut the thread in here for the music stand, there's a video right there, which will show you in depth how I cut the thread. So that's it for the moment. This is Steve pulling the shed door down saying remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe. Look after yourself, be kind to each other, and I look forward to having your company in the workshop, at the workbench again very, very soon. Till then, God bless. Bye for now. Thanks for watching the review. The Vivo 110 piece tap and die set, $68.99. Check the coupon below. If the coupon's not there, it means um, the, the special's finished, but still check them out.